Now, God created men. Yes, we know that from the Bible. But <laughs> the real question is, why? You know, God's transcendent spiritual purpose for man can be described only with one superlative. It is simply incredible. Yet precious few really understand exactly why God made man or what is God's purpose and destiny for humanity. Well, think what this means. Without the knowledge of why he exists, man has no real meaning or purpose in life. Man has no ultimate goal of death or destiny and spiritually is like a cork adrift on an ocean at the mercy of every force, good and bad, with no direction or anchor. Life is futile and uncertain. Yet, it need not be so, for God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, has clearly spelled out man's purpose in the Bible for those who will read and believe. A purpose for human life is this. God is literally reproducing himself through man. Shocking as it might seem, and as it might sound to many of uh, many believers who are members of, of, of this modern churchianity, shocking as it might sound, that's exactly what the purpose of God's of human life is. God is literally reproducing himself through men. He made men to be his sons and daughters, of course, in his own family, the God family, and hence to someday be gods themselves. Even more shocking to those who do not really understand the Bible teachings. Now, the usual teachings of this world are, you see, religious teachers of this world have fallen disastrously short of knowing or teaching this incredible truth. Some religious people say God promises heaven to the saved, although few seem to know exactly what man will do in heaven for all eternity. Others say that the saved become angels. Still, others believe in reincarnation, a sort of ladder-like hierarchy of life forms, from animal to human and in some cases to supernatural, upon which one continually ascends or descends after death and rebirth, depending upon his goodness or badness now. Some non-Christians believe when one dies, his mind loses its identity and combines in blissful oblivion with the forces of the universe. Those who subscribe to no religion... They usually think the purpose of life can be nothing higher than to make this world a better place to live. But none of these ideas, no matter how seemingly noble or widely held, have even remotely a basis in the Bible. What then is the purpose of life? Why did God create men? Well, let's quote the same question from King David's lips, Psalm chapter 8, verse 4. Psalm 8, verse 4. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Well, here is now the Bible teaching. To answer the question posed by King David, and to learn the purpose for man, we must learn something about God. We must learn that God is a family. This plain truth is hinted at from the very first verse in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, which says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God is the Hebrew word Elohim, which allows for plurality, like the English words group and church and fellowship. Genesis 1.26 further adds weight to this truth because it quotes God, Elohim, as saying, let us, not me, but let us make man in our image. In the Gospel of John chapter 1, Verse 1 and 2, that scripture removes all doubt about God being more than one when it pronounces, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, He was in the beginning with God. No question remains. God is composed of at least two beings who are different, yet are both God. Other verses prove that this group of two God beings is more than a group of group like a team, but is rather a literal family. For example, in Matthew chapter three verse seventeen, upon Christ being baptized, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Further, Christ confirmed in the most dogmatic terms that he and the Father are indeed related as a family. In John chapter ten, and in the section from verse 29 through 39, time and time again, Jesus Christ referred to God as his Father. 
much to the displeasure of some of the Jews who knew he meant it literally and therefore threatened to stone him for it. Clearly, we must conclude the obvious. God is more than one. He is a group of two beings and he is more than a group of non-related gods. He is, by his own admission, a family. But the most breathtaking part is that we, you and I, are destined to become full members of that family as literal sons. That is the purpose for men, dear brethren, dear friends. The scripture abound with direct, incontrovertible statements proving this. Let's see the scripture in John chapter 1 verse 12. It says quite clearly, As many as received him, Christ, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Children in plural. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 and 16. Romans 8, 15 and 16 pronounces, You received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. In plural again. Galatians chapter 4, verse 5 through 7. It announces that we have been redeemed by Christ, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Compare also Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11, which proclaims that since Christ and we, who are converted, have the same Father, we have the same God, he is not ashamed to call us brothers, again in plural. And Revelation chapter 21 verse 7, God says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God and he shall be my son. But some would read these verses to be mere figures of speech. They would tell us that we are not to be literal sons of God. Are they correct? Are we to be members of God's family only in a symbolic sense? Clearly, we will not be angels. In Hebrews chapter 2 verses 5 through 11, we read that men will have the world to come in subjection under him, but the angels will not. Hence, men will not become angels. We are told in Philippians chapter 3 verse 21 that we look to Christ from heaven, who shall change our wild body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And in 1 John chapter 3 verse 2 we read, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And what is he there, friends? And brethren, well, he is God. He was God incarnated, Emmanuel, God among us. Now he is resurrected, he is in his glorious body. So what shall we be, says First John chapter 3, verse 2? Well, we are children of God, we will be like him when he comes, we will be like him, and we shall see him as he is. So there it is. We shall be like him, not like an angel or some other being of inferior type. We shall be sons of God and part of God's family, part of his family, and therefore, since God is a family name, literally, we will be literally gods ourselves. Is this shocking? Probably to many. Let me just then for that, that let me repeat yet once again. So first John chapter 3 verse, verse 2. Now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So there it is. We shall be like him, not like an angel or some other being of inferior type. We shall be like him. We shall be sons of God and part of his family, and therefore seeing God, since God is a family name, we shall be literally God's ourselves. Yet some will still not believe. They will feel such a statement surely must be blasphemy. Well, go back and read again the Gospel of John, chapter 10 and verses 29 through 39. Now, see how some of the Jews themselves sought to stone Christ because he said he was God's son and therefore a God and equal with God. They said he spoke blasphemy. His reply... Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? Now, if he called them gods, 
to whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am son of God. You see, these Jews could not even accept that Christ was God, yet he told them that potentially they were gods themselves, you see. If he recalled them gods to whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God. <laughs> but they would not believe. As for all the others of you listening to this, the question is, will you? Will you? Some still wonder, or some will wonder, well, if God wanted sons, why didn't he just create them as powerful spirit beings rather than as human beings who must be changed into spirit? Very good question. Well, the answer is that God created us human first so we may build character or change and make any mistakes on a relatively low level of power compared to a spirit being. And since humans are subject to death and spirit beings are not, unrepentant sinners along with the misery caused by all the sins we have all committed, can be extinguished from the universe by the final lake of fire. You see, God's family and government will increase forever. David and the Apostle Paul indicated that the vast reaches of the entire universe will be our inherited domain. King David indicates that in Psalm 8, verse 4 through 6, and the Apostle Paul in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. We all need to understand all the aspects of God's amazing plan. What we as members of God's family will be doing during the millennium and throughout eternity and how we may qualify to fulfill that awesome destiny. In conclusion, let me give you the key verses about this Bible doctrine. Such an astounding truth is worth remembering by reviewing from time to time the basic scriptures that prove this doctrine. Here is a summary of the most important ones. Genesis 1.26 and John 1.1 God is a group of, at present, two beings. Matthew 3.17 The relationship between the two God beings is father and son, a literal family relationship. John chapter 1 verse 12 Romans chapter 8 verse 15 and 16 and Revelation 21 verse 7 Our destiny is to be spiritual sons of God. Philippians 3.21 and 1 John 3.2 We will look like Christ and hence be on the same God level as He. John 10 verse 29 through 39 Christ told the Jews that all men are potential gods. So, dear friends, the truth about why God made men is indeed astounding Stated simply, we are to be God's sons. As Christ stated, potentially, you are God's. Now that is incredible, or as our uh, modern youth would say, that is so awesome.